the topic of this webinar is how to increase sales and keep your com customers coming back for more. I'm going to be coming at this from a few different angles. I want to talk about how to build solid customer relationships. For those of you who are already trading, um, you'll probably have a good idea of how to do this on the ground. And, you, and yeah, so it's just some tips and techniques and talking about why that's so important, um, particularly if you want to increase your sales. Um, I'm going to talk for a little bit about how to optimize your RFN shop front, but I'm going to keep it quite broad of essentially some tips on what to think about if you do decide to trade online, um, how to do that in the best possible way, whether you use the open food network or you don't. Um, I'll keep that quite general because we're quite a small group. Um, I'm going to touch on email marketing, best practice, um, customer retention strategy, how to build trust with testimonials. Um, rewarding customer loyalty and a little bit about basking, basket spend so as you can see there's quite a lot to cover um so i'm going to whip through but if you've got any questions just unmute and ask me i also apologize i'm losing my voice a little bit today um so yeah i'll try and keep it for the remainder of the call i've got my tea so mm. so the first thing i want to talk about is the importance of building really solid customer relationships and one of the ways that you can do this is to help your customer feel like they belong. You may have seen this graph before. It's called Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. And you might hear a lot of marketers talk about this. And this is essentially the kind of core needs that all humans have um, ranked in importance. So the most important thing is our, we cover our physiological needs, then our safety needs. And then following that is feeling love and belonging. So this is a really core cool thing. Um, it's quite low in the pyramid uh, that humans need. So it's a good thing to kind of have this in mind when you're thinking about building customer relationships because hyper-empowered customers are faced with lots of choice. Um, at the moment, as you know, there's like so many different options for customers as to where they shop. So, and also when people are faced with a lot of choice, more and more people are showing less loyalty to businesses unless they feel like they belong to something. So one thing that's helpful to realize if you're in the local um, or small scale food movement, yeah. that it's important to recognize that buying behaviors are rooted in identity. So that means that if we want to change the food system on a wider scale, we need more people to feel like local, sustainable, healthy and well-farmed food is for them. So in other words, to help our customers stay and commit to our food businesses, we want to help them feel like they belong. And it can be helpful to help them feel like they belong to something bigger or to a cause. So this is just something to keep in mind when you are, say, for example, if you're writing posts on social media or if you're, if you're at that stage of um, your marketing, then just to kind of have that that. Thing in mind you want to also help your customers feel like they're understood because if we want to generate a sense of belonging and customer loyalty then you want your customers to feel valued and respected um and yeah and a way to help your customers feel like they're part of something bigger is to show that you care about the same things they do and that perhaps you share some of the same values and that will help you to create um more highly engaged customers with your business who will naturally want to shop with you. So this means that talk about some of the values that you hold as a business. Um, and for those, if you are active on social media, you can use social media as a platform for this. Um, but you could also just incorporate this into your conversations. You know, why are you doing what you're doing? What do you, what do you believe in as a business? And also this is, feels like it's like a quite a simple thing. Um, to say, but it's really important to help your customers feel good when they interact with you. Um, so keep your tone positive and friendly and avoid confusion and frustration. I'm going to go into this bottom bit a little bit more because um, this is quite important when people are buying online. You want to make sure that the journey for them to buy with you is as simple as possible. And so if this is like, if you think if you have a bricks and mortar store, um, then this is also be really clear with, for example, your opening times, if you make it easy for people to know when you're open and when they can shop with you. Um, the last thing you want is someone turning up at your shop and it being closed at a time they thought it might be open. So if you do have a Facebook account or a social media account, maybe have your opening hours um, clearly listed. If you have like an ordering service, like if people can order 
they're bred in advance. So if you if you're like if some of the things that you sell sell out quite quickly, then if you you could if you have an ordering service, make sure that everyone knows about it and that's something you can talk about. So it's just anything that you're doing as a business, um, make sure that you're um clearly communicating it. And it could be something where that could be a poster in the shop of your opening hours and and yeah, things like that. Um, I'm gonna talk a bit more about what that looks like online. But one of the reasons why we want to build customer loyalty is it doesn't just keep your customers coming back to shop with you when they have a million other choices. Um, it also helps to generate positive emotions in within the people who are shopping with you if you follow some of the points that, that I've spoken about in the previous slides. But building good customer relationships helps to take your customers on this important journey um, I've called it a follower because I'm thinking of this from an online perspective of whether people follow your Facebook account or Instagram account or something like that. But this could also be if there's someone that just knows that you exist. Um, so the journey from just knowing about you or having walked past your shop or having heard about you to customers, one step. But then you want to take your customers to being advocates for your business. So I'm sure... All of you could think of one example of when you have had a customer that's really championed what you're doing and really loves what you're doing and they just tell everybody about you. And if you don't have that experience as a food enterprise, then you may have that experience as a, as a, as a customer yourself. Has there been a business that you've had such a positive experience with or you really um, feel connected to the people who are running that business and you just want to shout about what they're doing to everyone who'll listen? Um, so it's how can you take your customers from that step to being an, being an advocate for what you what you're doing, and I'll talk about this a little bit more. Um, so this part, considering that um, those of you who are joining, it seem it seems like you don't have an OFN shop front yet. Um, so I'm going to skip over some of this, but just talk about the more kind of broad, useful things to know. I've just mentioned how important it is to make it as easy as you possibly can make it for your customer to do um, what it is you want them to do, i.e. shop with you. Um, there's a kind of cheesy phrase where, in, in called like, that I like to say, and I, I think a lot of people say it, is that if you confuse, you lose. Um, if it's confusing to shop with you, it's likely that your customers will just shop elsewhere. Um, so you want to make it as easy as possible. So if you do have an online shop, you want to share the link to your shop page in all of the places where your customers interact with you, be that on your social media accounts, be it on your website, on your newsletter. I've um, just got a number of chat. My OFN is under red as ferments. Okay, great. Cool. Thanks, Rose. That's really useful. Um, so, um, and nice to meet you. Thanks for sharing. I'm glad you're here. So, you um so you want to make it easy for people to shop with you um if it's online you can share a guide a three or four step guide there's lots of research that shows that if information is broken down into steps then people engage with it much better and find it a lot easier to do the action and are more likely to take the action um so that could be incorporated as well in um yeah, if, if it's not on your like shop front, it could be sharing on your social media, how to shop with you. Um, sometimes don't assume if it's really obvious that your customer will know that it's obvious. Um, so yeah, just something to think about. Really kind of hold your customer's hand um, so that they feel that, they're, that, you're, that you're there for them. Um, and also if the other thing is to share a call to action, sorry for the abbreviation, I normally don't use those. Um, but add a call to action um, to sign up to your mailing list if you have one. So the point behind this is that um, I'm thinking that Rose, this might not be specific, like as useful for you if you're if you're trading through um, in my backyard and for the others who aren't shopping, um, selling online. But it's useful to send reminders if you do have a an order cycle of any form whatever that means for you if there's a certain time of the week when your produce is available or if you have a certain day when you have a specific type of baked good available and it's not available on other days um, then if you can remind people about that then you're much more likely to make those sales so say if on Thursday is uh, seeded 
sourdough day um then and it's only on thursdays you could send her if you are building if you can build an email list it means you can email your customers on the wednesday and don't forget to get your delicious seeded sourdough tomorrow um so it's just a way of um getting customers to do what it is that you want them to do and say if you're sorry my dog's just running in the kitchen oh <laughs> so if uh i'm very distracted my attention span is very short these days um and also what did i want to say about the closing mind is at and that's also important if you have kind of uh, seasonal produce so thinking of say if you are a meat producer and you harvest once a month and that's the point when you have your stock available then you might want to that's this would be really valuable for you to send a reminder to your customers to let them know exactly when that's happening um we've seen through the OFN that when people send a reminder they get around 10% more in sales so it's just a really simple step um and that also highlights why um why it's worthwhile to set up an email list if you don't have one already i'll talk about that a little bit more um i'm gonna skip some of the ofn specific stuff but i just want to say this links back to keep making things as easy as possible for your customers to shop with you so you could share on social media the steps that customers can take to shop with you, share it regularly just because you've posted it once doesn't mean that someone's seen it. So don't be afraid to re repost posts because um, only around 5% of your audience on average will see any post that you post. So don't worry about repetition um, if you want to get the message heard. Um, and I'm going to share these slides afterwards and there's some useful links. So if you want to engage with some of this stuff a little bit more, it's quite clear from the slides and I've got some guides and things like that. So it'll be a clickable thing. So depending on what bit you want to learn more about, you can find. So it's just making sure that it's like that people can filter for items. So thinking for you, Rose, actually, this would be useful to make sure that you are categorizing your, your produce correctly. Um, cause this could be a point that makes like means that customers can't find you. So you want to make sure that you've chosen the right category. And so that counts for all of us that if we're shopping online, you just want to make sure that everything is really clear to the customer and there are no mistakes when it comes to, um, things like that. And okay. Ace. Nice. So the point of that is it helps put your customer first. So you're making the most of product categories and properties. Um, another thing you can do is actually, this is quite a useful thing, is that if you're a supplier, you could group similar items together in smaller quantities. So for example, offering a root veg bag for a single person rather than single carrots, parsnips, et cetera. That could be a way to increase sales where rather than selling kind of single items, you you've got some like or selling small amounts of items you've got essentially like a bundle but bearing in mind to make that accessible for a single person as well because sometimes bundle items usually prioritize people that have um either more money and can buy in bulk or so you also want to think um in terms of accessibility if you do smaller bundles then everyone um, might be able to access it and it's a way for you to essentially um upsell um because you can sell more things at, at one time um and also this is quite often specific but manage expectations but also that kind of links to if people come to your shop and it's closed then you want to really manage people's expectations so on the OFN we use order cycles um so it's really useful to explain what an order cycle is so that it's a way um so I've actually there we go there's an example here so I'm not going to talk about it too much now because there's more I want to cover um but if you're interested in this, there's an exact example that you could copy paste um, and use to explain what an, a call to action, is, um, an order cycle is. And okay, so how many of you are currently doing email marketing or have an email list or a list of your customers' emails that you use? Does anyone, does any, actually, if any of you do, could you unmute and just say, I do, um, so I know. And if you don't, then okay. So it's... I'm I'm beginning one. It's very small. Perfect. I mean, yeah. 
and email marketing this, I mean, it could be five people, you know, like a, a start is a start. And also depending on what, what you're doing, um, that's five customers that you're developing a closer relationship with or a closer connection with. So it's it's still super valuable, even if it's just a couple of people. Um, and also everyone starts somewhere. So uh, even the people who have hundreds of thousands of people on their, their email list, um, I'm thinking of, 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 as an example of having a massive email list, they still started with the one person. So um, it's, I would say this is a really important thing as, a, as if you're a smaller food enterprise to get started with, um, because an email is essentially, if someone signs up to your email list or they give you their email, they agreed for you to essentially they've opened their inbox to you so they've they've agreed that they want to take that one step further of hearing information they essentially consented to hearing more from you and you can take that as a sign that they want to hear more from you as well um so it's a really and it's also a really valuable thing to start doing because that's a relationship with your customer that you own it's a communication channel that you own so with social media, you're kind of at the mercy of social, like the social media platforms um, as to whether you can reach people or not. Um, whereas with email, like you own that connection or that communication channel with that person. Um, and also emails will around 97% of the time arrive in that person's inbox. So whether they have a really crowded inbox or not, 97% um, of the time, you've got a chance of being seen by them. You'll be in their inbox. Whereas on social media, with the algorithms, it's, I'm not saying don't use social media. It's an incredibly useful tool to, to communicate with your um, community. But um, because of the algorithms, you've got a slightly small, a much smaller chance of being seen by people, um, which on Facebook is around 5%. I think Instagram is around 20% of what you post will be 20% of your audience, sorry, on Instagram will see what you've posted um, around 5% on Facebook, um, which is why I mentioned earlier that repetition is not a bad thing. Um, so the, the best piece of advice that I could give would be to send reminder emails, which I've talked about before. Um, this was that stat that I told you earlier. We found that hubs get around 10% more revenue when they send a reminder. Um, and whenever you're sending emails, you want to remember the the goal of the email and prioritize it. So what is it that you want people to do with that email? Don't bombard people with lots of go here, go there, do this, read that, do that. You know, you don't want to be sending people all over the place and have like six links in it. You want to just think, what is this email for? What action do I want people to take? And make that the easiest thing to do in that email. So if the email is an order cycle reminder, you want one call to action really maximum um and that's for people that's a link to your shop most likely um but if it's like a newsletter type e email you may want a few more maybe three um but the action that you want people to take from your newsletter make that the clearest make that at the top um because every link is an opportunity for someone to click away from your email and do something else so make sure that your most important action is at the top um and this kind of goes back to some, um, the last point to remember the benefit to your customers goes back to what I said that the person who's giving you their email has consented to hearing from you. You want to remember the benefit to your customers of you sending the order, like the reminder. I'm not going to call it an order, like a reminder, but any reminder. Um, and think of it in a really positive way. They've consented to hear from you. They're interested in what you're doing and what you're offering. So why would you not want to remind them if they're, if uh, there's a deadline approaching of when they're able to, to purchase from you? Um, that's actually a helpful thing to do. Um, thinking about um, during COVID, for example, when um, I think all the cycle reminders were really valuable because when it was quite tricky to, um, to, to, yeah, I, I, a lot of if if you arrive on a shop front and the order cycles close and you've just missed it and that might be the only way for you to get good food for the week then you're going to be disappointed and it goes back again to that idea of helping your customers feel positive um, around you and that kind of sense of disappointment oh I've missed it um, yeah I kind of laboured that point a bit <laughs> so, um, and the other thing is to don't be afraid, um, maybe a phrase that don't be reticent about inviting your customers. Um, 
that no one's going to have a bad a, like a bad reaction to you inviting them to sign up to your email list or to hear from you via email and if they don't want to they'll just say no so it's or they just won't um so you've got to assume that those that have do want to hear from you so it goes back to like remembering the benefits um i've got a guide here um when i send the slides if you click on that link it literally goes to like a copy paste template um, that you can just walk through that helps you to kind of customize um, a request to sign up to your email list so it kind of takes the heavy lifting out of it because some I know sometimes when it's like a request it's quite hard to think of the right words but there's a guide and um, it the guide actually helped Halston Local Food Hubs to increase their subscribers from 24 to 47 um, and increase subsequent orders so again Every email list starts with one, and this is an ex like another small scale example. Forty seven customers for a small scale food enterprise um, that are being that are have opted in to have this slightly more um, intimate communication route is is actually very valuable. Even though it's only say twenty five more people, that's twenty five more people that might have just not thought about shopping with you and have just gone somewhere else for convenience that would have that prompt to be like, oh. Yeah. Um, and if you are on the OFN, then we can set up an integration that helps to sign up your new customers automatically. Um, so my email is linked to this as well. So you can click and send me an email if you want any help or this is something you might be interested in. And it helps. Um, we can help set you up in a way that's GDPR compliant if you're using email tools like MailChimp. Um, I'm kind of glossing over a lot of things. If you're already in the early days with your email marketing and you're just kind of gathering emails and you're sending like, you know, like a standard email rather than using an email tool like MailChimp, et cetera, um, then whatever works, works for now. But I do have a really handy how to get set up on MailChimp guide, which I think is linked. Um, if I linked it here? Yeah, I've, it's, there's all these links um, to previous webinars that I've done. Um, and like just step by step how to set up a MailChimp account that's GDPR compliant if you want to kind of get quite serious about your email and um then yeah there, there's there's this guide to help you um and so again another way to help increase customer loyalty is if you can to um personalize what you're doing this is why sometimes using these kinds of tools like MailChimp is quite useful because it makes it a bit easier to do that. Um, otherwise, I guess if you're doing it just via your normal email, you probably would need to keep a spreadsheet and notes about that person. Or, whereas on MailChimp, you're able to segment people or um, you can set up automations. If someone's new to your email list, they can get a welcome email automatically. So there's different things you can do, which I'm not gonna go into too much detail now but just to let you know that that's possible and if you find that things are growing then it it'd be something to think about getting set up um on mailchimp but you could for example onboard new customers with a welcome email which is a nice personal touch um offer extra special thank you emails for extra loyal customers a thank you goes a really long way um you don't like necessarily have to offer things like discount codes and stuff like that actually just sending a, a personal thank you and is yeah um maybe with like an email and a photo of you or your team and a thank you for supporting us um can be a really nice touch and just helps to kind of add to that feel good factor that will keep your customers um connected to your your enterprise um, and also you could encourage lapsed customers to come back um so if you've noticed that someone and this really is useful if you if you are still quite small it's probably a lot easier for you to track your relationships with your customers um but maybe if you're bigger it could be something where um there are different things that you can do to to monitor if someone hasn't shopped with you and connect that to maybe sending them an email of course if they've consented to receiving emails from you um but just and again this is like a personal thing but done in the right way it can be really effective it might have just been that they're doing something else it might prompt a conversation which is nice um they might give you some reasons why they might have lapsed it might be something as simple as they've moved out of town it might be um something like um it might be something else that you could help with um but yeah 
So a nudge or a reminder or a soft flex reconnect might be quite nice there. Um, and there's a checklist to get started. Again, you just click on this when I've sent the slides and it will have all the info for you. Okay, on to customer retention. How are we doing for time? Two minutes past. Okay. Any questions so far? Or are we all good? Also, if you don't want to ask questions as we're going, um, then pop them in the chat and we can get to them at the end. As you think of them. So this kind of goes back to what I was talking about before, how important it is to understand your customers. Understanding your customers will help you know the right way to speak to them, what they're interested in, what they you know, you just want to know as much as you can about your customers, because then that helps you to serve them better. Um, and it helps you to improve what you're doing, um, which will help you gain more sales and gain closer connection with your customers, which there's all the great things that I talked about before, customers being advocates for what you're doing, et cetera, word of mouth, all sorts of benefits. Um, so don't be afraid to ask. You can get to know your customers through a survey. This doesn't have to be really complicated. It could be as simple as just asking your customers. It could be next time you have a regular customer who you feel like you have good, um, you maybe have good chats with or a good like relationship with, then you could just ask them a few questions that you're interested to know to say it would really help me to know a little bit more about this thing. Um, so it helps us to improve and to be able to, um, yeah, offer a better service to you and have a think of some of the most important questions that you'd like to know. Um, you could, if you wanted to do it via an email list or for your social media, you could create a survey builder and then share that. You could do a quick poll on Facebook. Um, that can be really simple, something that you can do um, on Facebook, you can just do a poll post. If you have a business page, um, on Instagram, you could put something in your stories. You could put a feedback form on your website if you have one. Um, and you could just ask for opinion, an opinion via email. If you do have like, um, people's email addresses, you could send, you could, yeah, send an email and ask them. And the goal of this would be to understand what your customers love so that you can do more of it. Uh, yeah, I do. I've, I think I've got a couple of links on the next page. So that's coming. Thanks, Liz. Um, so you want to understand what your customers love and that will help you to do more of it. And it helps to build a really solid relationship. Um, you want to know who are your customers? What do they care about? Why do they buy from you? What is their main concern? Why would they not buy from you? So it's, think of the questions that um, it's, it's hard to think of questions that would work for you without knowing your customers but really have a think of what what would be really helpful for you to know even if it's just three questions um think of your most committed customers what is it they love about shopping with you because there may be other customers like them out there that if you broadcast more this thing that you're doing that they love so much might entice those other customers who are similar to shop with you and become similarly committed customers so this is how understanding the, the people who who choose to shop with you can be really helpful um so i think i might have covered some of this already it helps you to understand your customers helps you improve what you're doing helps you to ah this is the other really important thing sometimes if a customer has a problem they might not say anything um ever um they might just shop elsewhere um so it's, it also if you're asking for feedback it helps your customers to to feel like you actually care about their experience of shopping with you, which helps them feel like, you know, we want our customers to feel like we care about them. Um, and it will help you to solve any issues. So, and it's also if one customer is having an issue, it might be an issue that other customers are having. Um, so it just helps you to see where, where you, where things might be going wrong, where you might be losing sales, et cetera, and, and solve a problem. Um, mm -mm. And yeah, again, don't be afraid to ask. Um, here's just some ideas, actually. What makes your best customer shop with you? Find out what they love and do more of it. Why did a new customer begin to shop with you? That's a really good one. If someone's just start, if you have a new customer, you could just ask them, oh, what made you, you know, what made you decide to come here for your da da da? Um, or what made you choose us? And then you can maybe find out and that might give you some insight into how you can entice other new customers to, to begin to shop with you. You could also ask them if you've just, if they're like, say, for example, if they're local and they've just started shopping with you, 
why didn't they do it before? And that can give you some insight into if there were any barriers that could help you then remove those barriers for other customers like them. If you're losing customers, who is leaving and why? If someone's not shopping with you anymore, this is why, you know, the lapsed email, um, the lapsed customer email is quite useful because if you can find out why someone stopped shopping with you, again, that could help you solve a problem. Yeah, are there any pain points with your service or produce? What can you improve? Here's some examples, um, Liz. So I've got a link to Google Forms, um, Typeform and SurveyMonkey. They're all free um, and they're all very easy to use. Um, so I usually use Google Forms. I'm gonna share one actually at the end of this workshop um, or webinar, sorry, to see um, yeah, how you found it. So you can see one in action and try one out for yourself, um, but they're free to create and they're really, um, yeah, very simple. If you do get stuck, um, you've got my email in the slides. So I'm, I'm open to, to troubleshooting in an email for you. And here's a couple of examples of what that might look like on social media, if you do have a Facebook page. Um, so you can put something in a, in a, in a post. Um, here's a stories post. You can ask a really simple question. It could, you know, like, do you prefer this bread or this bread? Or, um, and then you could, people could choose, do you prefer this bread to this bread? Yes, no. And then that, yeah, could, be another way as well to have a look at your product range um and then here you can add like this is one of that's one on instagram this is one on facebook on the right um so here you can um, i've used this to help find out good times for doing webinars um and yeah so you could do multiple choice you can have ones where people can answer in like a long for form format and here's just some tips around what questions to use have a clear goal um that's the most important thing what what are you doing the survey for? Um, if people are giving you answers, it's such a valuable, it, it, it's of such value to your business and someone's taking the time out of their day to do it. So it's a really, yeah, make sure you've got kind of a clear use for the information. Ask great questions, keep it simple and short. So don't ask, I would say never ask more than 10 questions. I mean, 10 is still quite a lot. <laughs> so if you think of your experience answering surveys, you know, if it's more than a few questions and you, you know, like, oh, what have I signed up to do? This is actually taking too, like, so un unless you've got like a very committed customer, um, I would keep it to five questions maximum or less. Um, also, I would send follow-up thank yous. Yeah, SurveyMonkey is, um, thanks, Kat. SurveyMonkey is really easy to use as well. And it also like, it kind of drip feeds it as well, which is a nice touch. Yeah, thank you. Um, so send, it's an opportunity if someone sent, if someone sent, if you've asked some questions and someone's giving you some great feedback that they really love what you're doing, um, you can use this opportunity to send a thank you. Well, I'd send a thank you to anyone who responds. Of, I think it's even more important to send a thank you if someone's giving you negative feedback actually, um, because that can help you improve. And I think sending a thank you can go some way to help. If they have been annoyed, that can go some way to improving the customer relationship. Potentially, actually, good story that um, uh, my partner used to run a um, mushroom, um, was a mushroom grower and used to run a mushroom grow kit business as well as growing for me mushrooms. Um, and some of his best, most committed customers that used to just like, you know, like, spam about everything he was doing and used to come to all of his things and they actually started off as customers who were not happy or who had bad experiences um maybe they got like a crushed grow kit where Hermes destroyed it or something or you know and they've kind of messaged in and they're like you know this is really annoying I want it for a birthday present now something like that um and that gave Pat the opportunity to to, to manage that situation and when you have a customer who's been unhappy and you're able to kind of turn it around so that they're that they feel like you've heard they feel like you care they feel like you've um done what you can to do right by them that can help you create some really committed customer relationships um so if you get negative feedback um i would say that's like like yeah, definitely a priority to write them a really thoughtful um, email in response. Um, and even if they don't shop with you again, at least it means that they're um, particularly uh, most food enterprises that I work with are local businesses. So 
and people talk in a local community. So it's it's just good to always try and leave interactions in a in a in a positive light. Um, although sometimes you so you probably have had very difficult customers, and sometimes there's nothing you can do. But you know, don't worry about those guys. <laughs> um, use the information to improve and build um, build trust. To add. so, what I mean by this is. Um, you can use your thank you follow-up uh, as a way to ask for a testimonial. So if you get a positive testimonial from a customer, that can help you build trust um, among people who may not have shopped with you yet, um, or even people who are shopping with you. It's like confirmation. Oh yeah, these people are great. I'm glad I'm shopping with them. Um, and it almost, if you can share these in an online space, it acts like word of mouth online. And word of mouth is such a vital um, and important and effective, uh, yeah, way to grow your business that if you can translate that into the online space as well, um, that is only a good thing. So try if you can to gain testimonials. I've got a step-by-step, -step, I think on the next page. Yeah, I'm going into more detail here. Um, so, okay, so, 92% of people trust recommendations from family and friends more than any other type of advertising. So um, word of mouth is a really important tool. And 88% of people trust online reviews written by strangers as much as recommendations from personal contacts. <laughs> so <clears throat> I really hope that this kind of highlights how, yeah, how effective gathering testimonials um, from your happy customers can be for your business. Um, and if you get them, use them. So if you, you could even add a good testimonial to the end of your emails and just pop it in the bottom as like almost like a, like a signature, add it into your email signature. Um, you could post um, any testimonials you have online on your social media accounts. Um, and don't be afraid to request them. Um, I put this slide in to remind me to say that to get a really effective testimonial, you want to essentially make the testimonial feel like a bit like a story because it helps to engage people with what that person's saying and it helps it to feel, yeah, helps it to feel real and um, more memorable. So I've got another guide here. I feel, I, I feel bad because I kind of feel like Here's a webinar. I'm just sending you in all these other directions to go and just do other things. And let, but hopefully um, you can cherry pick which bits might be particularly useful for you and what you want to do next. Um, I just want to take this chance actually to just say that this is all an iterative process um, with marketing. It's it. You're no one is doing everything, every single thing right all the time and at the start and. You know, even if you just improve one thing one week or even one month, that's still an improvement. And then you could improve another thing the following month. And gradually over time, that will that will build up to have a considerable effect on your business. So if you think that I might ask for some testimonials this month and the next month, I might do a little bit of work of getting a few more people on my email list. And yeah, and gradually these will build up, but you don't have to have everything perfect from the start. Um, also the best marketing strategy is a sustainable one to you and the time that you have to do it. But it's better to do just something, even if it's a small thing, than, than nothing. So um, so here's just a step-by-step. -step. Um, so this is specifically in response to people sending you, um, replying to your survey. Cool. Thanks, Rose. Um, yeah, so... Step one, um, you could email everyone that gave feedback to your, sur um, to your survey, thank them, et cetera. Then step two, remind them why it's, why it's good to support you and how they benefit. And this is, ties into that first thing that I was talking about, about helping people feel like they belong. Um, so by shopping with you, they're contributing to um, building a fairer fair food system or, or supporting their local community or whatever feels um, real for you and your values, you could add something in there that helps communicate a shared value potentially. And then step three, um, explain why it's helpful. Oh, and then step four, this is actually a really interesting framework. You could hold, again, hold your hold your customer's hand. 
um they it, you know when someone asks you for a testimonial and you're like oh I don't know what's right uh um actually having like a this is like a bunch of things that you could just copy paste into your email um and that just helps the person leaving the testimonial to kind of think about what they're going to say and it's a framework can sometimes be helpful for someone to write you a really good testimonial rather than a was good thanks nice one <laughs> this could help you get a more kind of textured testimonial um, and it also helps them to do it and feel good about what they've shared because most people want you know it people feel good um, when they're doing something helpful think how you feel if you've helped a business that you really like um, it, it feels good to to be helpful so yeah again if you can make this easy for them that's a nice thing to do and then don't forget to ask them for their permission to feature it and thank them again. Um, so reward customer loyalty. Um, I'm not sure, I might, mm, here's some stats of why reward, rewarding loyalty um, is good. I'm gonna just leave these for you to have a look at. Um, you could set up a loyalty scheme and I just wanna kind of caveat this of uh, with, there are other ways to build loyalty. It doesn't just have to be with physical rewards. So some other things, like a lot of the things we've talked about up to this point help to build loyalty. Um, but this is if you do want to um, do something like this, you can. But again, it's that iterative thing. If this is something you want to do one day or you have capacity to, then do it. But if you don't have capacity, don't worry about it. Try the other steps first. Um, and I, one of the, a nice thing to do would be um, a card, like a stamp card. One of the great things about this is that it helps remind people of you because if they've got like a card, then they might see it and be like, oh yeah, okay. I'll remember to buy da 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 da. Um, so it's like, you've kind of got like a little post space in their wallet or something. So it's kind of like also a bit of display advertising in some, in some ways. Mm. And this just helps people choose you over an alternative as well. I know what I'm like and um, as a marketer, I, I always fall for all the marketing things, not fall as if it's, you know what I mean? Um, and if I've got like a loyalty scheme, even if it's like a little bit more expensive with the, the if if there's this, like, it's almost kind of gamified, if there's a card and it's like, oh, on my 10th one, I get a da 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 um, that it just means I'm a little bit more likely to choose that option than other options. So just think about how, and that's another good rule of thumb as well think about how you respond to things it's likely with your business that um yeah it, it's your business you do th and or your or your care caretaking you're caretaking this business if it's, if it's not just yours if you're a cooperative or something um then it, it's important that you feel good about what you're doing um as well so think about what works for you cool thanks for the question rose i'll i'll get to that in the q a so um yeah, there's some helps. Ah, shopper feels in control of their rewards. That's another that's another good point that I thought of another time that I forgot just then. Okay, so you could do other things like prioritize early bird shopping hour. Um, there's a link here on how to do that on the OFN and what that means. Go in a bit more detail. I'm just going to go a little bit faster because we've only got 10 minutes. You could offer a free gift. That could be useful for you if you have excess or end of date stock. Um, that could be a help, a really helpful way for you to kind of move that stock and encourage purchasing other things. <coughs> um, when you could also, yeah. Um, so it introduces shoppers products they may not have bought from you before. So if a free gift could be something like if you've got a new, a new product, um, and you, or if it's a, or if it's a strange and unusual to understand, like if I don't know, like Marmite bread or something, just. <laughs> um then it could and it's actually delicious but people might be put off because or I don't know if it's like an odd thing then maybe um starting off with a free and the free gift if you do if you're lucky enough to have a bricks and mortar store then a free gift could be as I, I guess in times of COVID there's a question mark on this but I don't know what the best guidelines would be but I've definitely seen places doing it um is having like free samples um to try um so things like things like that um branded items such as the tote bag again 
um, I'm going to caveat this with it depends what your your ethos would be about creating um, something like that. Um, but a branded item, it's essentially you've got display space. Um, so someone using your tote bag, particularly if it looks great, um, that's another way to kind of essentially advertise your business um, for free. Well, not free for the cost of the tote bag, but um, there is a method here on how to offer discounted shops. Um, so, yeah, so, um, 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 yeah, um, so the discounted shop option, um, there's a method here, so you can, that's particularly on the OFN, so you could look at that. Um, you could add a QR code to a loyalty card, um, which can take people where you want them to go, so that if you're, if you do have an online shop on your loyalty card, you can have a QR code that links to your shop to make it, going back to that point, of make it as easy as possible for your customers to do what we want them to do. Um, so I, there's a couple of links to, diff, um, to printing sites that often have cheap options. All right, so basket spent. I do just want to quickly go to Rose's question so I don't run out of time and miss it. So with loyalty vouchers, that is something that we're developing currently. Um, so the Open Food Network, for those that don't know, is an open source um, platform. Um, so that means that a lot of the improve. so we have like a, a development team that are constantly kind of um, looking after the software and improving it. Uh, but it does mean that when we develop new things, essentially we kind of crowdsource it as a as a as an open source or um, not for profit to make that happen. And we've currently got a project where we are developing um, loyalty vouchers, so that is coming. I don't have a timeline yet, but hopefully soon. Um, so yeah, more more on this, Rose. If you could send me an email i will send i'm just going to put my um it's just k k a y at openfoodnetwork.org.uk um and i'll send you where we are with that um and if there's any workarounds that we've currently got so yeah um because there might be a workaround that you can use in the meantime until our shiny new vouchers are available voucher potentials available ace okay so basket spend um, does anyone else have any questions before I get into basket spend? Because we might have, like, it might get a bit tight towards the end. Um, so if you've got any questions, pop, pop them in the chat. Um, so how to increase basket spend? Thinking of what is most relevant to um, those of us in this room. Um, offer as much choice as you can. Um, this is quite useful, maybe more for kind of hubs, um, that the more options that a customer has um the more potential it is for them to buy other items from you um are there any other higher products that you can list so say if you have a bakery is there anything else um that you could put in store um that might be relevant but different like could you have local honey for example that might be a higher value item um could you re if you're um, if that it, you, could you reach out to kind of other suppliers in your local area and essentially create space in your store to sell some different things um again if you're adding like a little bit more variety it just gives you more potential for a customer to be like oh i'm gonna get bread oh i want honey with my bread or yeah um also again it comes back to this feedback form depending on the kind of enterprise you have you could always ask customers what they buy elsewhere and if there's anything in particular that they'd like to buy from you also make the most of seasonal best and what's special in your local area. Um, if there's something that's seasonal special, shout about it. If you're doing, um, if you're doing like a seasonal type of bread, for example, if you've got seasonal produce um, or a particularly seasonal or a festive ferment or something like this, then you could really shout about it on your social media um, or email about that one product in particular. And it's likely that if someone buys one thing from you, then they might, it, and yeah, you could also say this goes really well with X, Y, Z and the other thing, which means that there's more chance for them to buy other things. If you do have a shop front on the OFN, maybe for those who are catching the replay, this links to how, um, so we list essential products on the OFN that you can then list on your shop front. Um, so there's like a guide, um, a blog here of how that works and whether that might be a way to help you increase the range of your hub. Um, so yeah, take a look. Um, you just click on this is the, the deck that I'm going to share with everyone who signed up for this is clickable. So, um, so yeah, season opportunities. What can you do over Xmas, 
Christmas, what is it? Easter items, back to school options. So back to school options is an interesting one because um, it, again, this might be a way where if you did like a little, goes back to the idea of having like a small package of single items or something like that, back to school cakes, cakes, selling cakes in like slices, um, things that would work well in a lunchbox. So having a think about what's happening around you, um, what time of the year of it is it? And if there's anything that you can do to the range that you're offering that might tap in to that seasonal, seasonal opportunity, um, that can be quite effective. Consider local non-food items. If again, this is particularly useful if you've got a bricks and mortar store, or even if you if you do have an online shop front, of course, this is also just as useful. What else could you list? Because um, you know, if you're using the offering platform, you could list any of these things. Um, what's new this week? Promote it um, early doors for loyal customers. So if you've got um, something that almost always sells out, um, you could, yeah, um, if you've got. And this also could be a way of enticing people to your email list. If you know that there's one type of, I'm going to come back to bakery example. If there's one type of bread that always sells out and people come in, they're like, oh, it's gone. Um, then that could be an, an enticement for people to maybe order in advance or sign up to your mailing list um, to get early doors option for it. Okay, I got through it. Two minutes to spare. I'm sorry we lost the Q&A. Um, but if you want more information or different kind of guides or help and support we've got a thriving food hubs facebook group and this isn't just for those uh, people who are um, using the open food network as a platform it's for um everyone in the group is from a small scale food enterprise of some variety um, so it's quite a useful useful place to be because you know sometimes there's like co-sharing of different things that other organizations are going through that you might relate to um, might be helpful or you might have a helpful answer for someone else or you might have a question for the community and someone might have a helpful answer for you um click through there and you can you can sign up um and oh, thank you oh and there's one thing i do have a feedback form here which is linked if you don't get a chance to do it today um when i send this you'll be able to see it ah. Um, so if I 